بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters in Islam and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Sira of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم where we left you the last time of that story of Jibreel عليه السلام where he came and he wrestled Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the heart incident that is narrated in Sahih Muslim and Anas رضي الله عنه وارضاه before that, Halima Sa'diya radiallahu anha did not want to give Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa back to his mother, Amina bint Wahb radiallahu And we know for sure that what happened, that is the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Halima Sa'diya, where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was with her, and all these provisions that happened, and the sustenance that happened, she used to go back to her, his mother and say, Akhafu alayhi min wabait al Makkah. I fear for him for all this, uh, you know, impurities of Makkah and all this uh, the, uh, the, the the environment and so on so she keeps keeping him back till that story happened Halim al Sadiya feared for him because the men came back and the kids came back to her and says Qutila Muhammad Muhammad died but of course he didn't so this as we mentioned before this was an incident that, that clarified that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was purified and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts from the illness of that insha'Allah and this one said Halim al Sadiya came back to his mother and all of a sudden the one that did not want to give her son back to her just saying take him take him so his mother knew there was something up he says what happened to you you just telling me that I don't want to give him back to you and all of a sudden you give him back to me he says you feared for something had happened and she was honest with her and told her he says wallahi do not worry I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect for him and when he was born I said I seek refuge in Allah from everyone that will not do any evil eye against him and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came back till he was six years old his mother died Amina bint Wahb his mother died and now he became doubly orphaned not just lost his father, he lost his mother. And the scholars will tell you that this is something for us, brothers and sisters, to learn. That Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the best uswa for mankind. He's the best role model. Why? Because if you talk to any Prophet other than a messenger, other than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu can you say that can he be a husband? Not all of them were. Can he be a, the, 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 a son? Can he, the best husband, the best neighbor? Can he, anyone talk about him being an orphan? Can he? You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him everything in order for him to relate to all human beings and to be a tangible example for us as a role model, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. At this time, it was supposed to be his jad, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. He looked after him from six years old to about eight years old and two months approximately till he died. But in the meanwhile, when he was in the sponsorship of his grandfather, he looked after him perfectly. He honored him. It is also narrated in the book that Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, had a special place in the Kaaba where he used to have a little mat. Even his children would not dare to sit in the place of Abdul Muttalib. Except Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was honored to be able to sit in that place. And when the uncles of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sons of Abdul Muttalib, his grandfather, told him not to do that. Abdul Muttalib himself told him, no, leave them. This man will have a great, great disposition in the future. He knew it, he felt it, and he honored him. Till that day that his own grandfather died, his kafala, his sponsorship and ownership now was taken to his uncle, uh, Abu Talib. Abu Talib is narrated one day, he looked after him for almost 40 years as we will come and see insha'Allah. He helped him with everything he, he had. But you will see, subhanAllah, when he died, how he died. Again, we say, reiterate that the hidayah, the guidance comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide us to that insha'Allah that is right and follow it insha'Allah. Ameen. In that incident, one time a man came out of uh, Mecca. He says it was qahta, it was very dry, nothing, there was no rain, it was dry. And he says, Ya Aba Talib, go istasqi, go ask Allah to give us rain. So he took the ghulam. Who is the ghulam? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with him. And then the writer of the hadith, he says, Wallahi, there was no 
no clouds around. But by the barakah, by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, given Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu this honor, he says the clouds came from everywhere. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the sustenance of rain till everything was given water and the cultivation was grown and the animals were quenched to the thirst. These are beautiful indications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to people. This man is special. This special. This is the leader. This is the indication. These are the signs. Among that indication, of course, a man was called Bahira. This is known in the seerah, and no one denies that fact. And one in the narration says his real name is Girgis. Wallahu a'lam. He saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam coming with his uncle Abu Talib, taking him on that, a trip, a journey of a business trip. These are used to be merchants. Go back and forth, they buy and sell, and so on. So he took him with him, approximately 12 years old or so. Bahira saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam coming with his uncle, and he noticed him. He kept an eye on him, and when Prophet Muhammad Sallam came by, he says he took his hand, and from his uh, uncle's hand, he says, "Hada Sayyid al-Alamin, Hada Rasul Rabb al-Alamin." This is the leader and the master of the creation. This is the messenger of the Lord of creation. He says, "Wa ma had? How do you know that?" He says, "Wallahi, I kept an eye on you since you left the." Uh, the uh, the trees and uh, they bow down to him and uh, he, you can hear you can see everything bow down to him and nobody does that except for a prophet or a messenger he is that one another narration also says that there was a ghamama that felt continued with prophet muhammad sallam to shade him and there was a man among ahl al farasa those people of insight that people know well he kept looking at prophet muhammad sallam even Bahira, and he kept asking about his dreams. Who was your father? Who was, what do you see? How do you feel? And he asked him about everything to make sure that he is the prophet and messenger. And he then make sure that he saw the seal of the prophets. It is a, a birthmark between the shoulder blades. And it looked, it had a few hairs. It is narrated there was three hairs. Wallahu a'lam. It's like the hairs of uh, the rooster. And it had a few birthmarks around it. So he made sure that it is him. Every Every indication that is him was there. So he told Abu Talib, he says, do not take him to the Jews, they will kill him. They know his signs and they have killed prophets and messengers before. Keep him away. Fakhaf Abu Talib. Abu Talib, he says, I will not take him with me to that. He changed the plans and he came back. This is where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was saved by that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them also from what from anything that is not befitting for a prophet or a messenger to go through even when that young age so he never drank alcohol he never was intended to anything to do with even weddings that they used to drink and dance and do anything that is not befitting or any act of transgression the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was saved by that in other narrations even prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he they used to work on the Kaaba and carry the stones some of them used to actually take their clothes off and take their thobe, their garments, and place it on their shoulder to protect their shoulders from carrying the stone. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not that. His aura was never exposed. And one time, it is narrated that one time, as a human being, he wanted to go to a urs, he wanted to go to a wedding to hear and enjoy. And Allah subhanahu wa taala gave him nuas. He made him into a slumber in mode. He did not even go to that place. Wallahu alam. He says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says that, uh, he says, Du'itu ila hilf. I was invited to a party, to a, a treaty. It's called Hizb al Fudul at that time. He, was at, he says, Wallahi, if I had Humar al Ni'am, the Humar al Ni'am is the red camels. This was the, the best uh, of worldly position, like having a, a fancy car uh, as, as you have now. So he says, this would be much better than that. Hizb al Fudul. It is mentioned that one narration says they called it Hizb al-Fudul because the people that joined it was uh, what they called Fadlis, Fadl and so on. Their the first name was Fadl. And the Fudul among the benevolence because they established and they enjoined good and forbid evil. And it was there before Islam and it stayed after Islam with uh, 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 Abdullah ibn Zubayr even when Hussein was uh, oppressed. He went, to, he went and he says, Wallahi, I will I'll fight, I'll fight for him till death. And of course, there's a, a story behind it. And Al-Mughira, Al-As ibn Al-Mughira, the father of Amr ibn Al-As radiallahu anhu wa 
he, there was a man from uh, came and to do a, a deal with him outside of uh, Mecca, but he oppressed him. He did not give him his right. So he declared, what happened to the righteous? What happened to the good? Do we not establish good here? And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to get him. And another story says that uh, Jibreel Alayhi Salam was with him behind him and of course in the form of a, a big camel and of course when uh, the people made fun of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says you know uh, that uh, that man that was oppressed uh, they knew that uh, Al-Mughira was among the Arab society and he was not listened so go go to him he will get you his, uh, his your rights back of course not knowing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ayyadhu bi ruh al-Qudus that Jibreel was with him by the blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he went knocking door he give this man his right so right away al-Mughira gave him his right so people around him was wondering what happened uh, we thought that you were going to uh, make fun of him and not give him that man's rights back. But that's what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. He established, uh, he joined good and forbid evil even when he was young. He was taught and raised by Allah, by the, the wilaya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the guardianship and the protection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Jalla fi ula. Now, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was now known for his moral conduct, his behavior and his amana is in trustworthiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testified as we mentioned before, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are the highest moral of conduct. He was the leader of human beings as such, was known, books could be written just for his moral conduct. Now Khadija radiallahu anha wa heard about this man. Who was this man that has got his reputation? To be honest. So she asked him to do what? To look after her business. Because of what, akhi? Yes, moral conduct, brothers and sisters. So if you lead by example, and the best da'wah, wallahi, I tell you, especially in the Western world, the best da'wah is to lead by example. You don't have to go knock on people's door. I'm not asking you not to, but I'm saying the best way to invite people to, to uh, the fold of Islam and the faith of Islam, inshallah, is to live Islam, to be a walking pulpit. Be like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Aisha radiallahu anha wardaha was asked, how was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? She used to say he was a walking pulpit. He kana khuluqu al-Qur'an. His manners and conducts was the Qur'an. Was a walking Qur'an, akhi and ukhti. How could we not be like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? At least do our best to be the followers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I ask you for the sake of Allah. If Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes back, and he looks at you, your batters and your conduct, the way you live your life, Akhin Ukhti. Will he know you to be a Muslim? So let us come back to be with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannah. Follow his footsteps, inshaAllah, in every aspect of our life, inshaAllah. Ameen. And now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taking care of the business of Khadija, radiallahu anha. And he, she sent with him Maisara. Yassar Allah, subhanAllah, his name, Maisara, among from ease, did tijara. Maisara himself, among the uh, slaves of Khadija, he used to do what? He used to accompany Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He was astonished by how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam led by examples in the moral conduct. How smart he was, how a great businessman, how honest he was. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was different. Before people used to go buy some merchandise and sell it, and that's it. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do what? He used to buy merchandise, sell it there, from there to buy merchandise again and go sell it there. So it was doubling her money, the profit, you see. So Maisara kept that in mind. And Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha asked Maisara one time, how is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So he told her, wallahi, I haven't seen anyone like him before. And everyone testifies at his moral conduct. Everyone testifies that he's honest. And he is a very smart businessman. And, and, and so on, so. So now Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha started to take interest in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now she, one time uh, there was a, a story narrated that when he was traveling one day, a man says, wallahi, he is a prophet. When he was asked why, he says, this sajara, this, this tree, is about it prostrated and covered over Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it shaded him. And no one who sits behind under that tree except is a prophet or a messenger. Again, so many signs, subhanAllah. And now Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is given the beautiful treaty. And we said before that look in Indonesia, Akhi and Ukhti, 
How was Islam spread in Indonesia? Was it by the fi fighting and the wars, spreading by the sword, as people claim? La wallahi. The biggest Muslim country on the face of the earth, Indonesia, not one sword was uh, actually lifted or was not spread by the sword in Indonesia. That's one of the biggest proof that Islam is not spread by the sword, Akhi and Ukhti. We will do what we have to do, but even then, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lived among the Jews and the Christians in Medina. And we know it's the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth. And we don't have the swords, Akhi and Ukhti. We don't have the power, but it's the power of Iman and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah that this Islam is the fastest growing religion on the face of the earth. In Indonesia, there was not one sword lifted. We know that. But by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was by the honest merchants. Reminding Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as an honest merchant, people came into the fold and they believe he was blessed by Khadija radiallahu anha by his moral conduct, inshaAllah. Now Khadija radiallahu anha, when she started to ask, and then she heard all the positive things, she asked to marry Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she sent a woman and to ask for his hand in marriage in an indirect way. Of course, she was ghaniya and jamila. She was a very powerful woman, a great disposition, a honorable of society. She was very rich, very beautiful. So many men asked for her hand in marriage, but she refused. But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she had a special interest on for so many reasons, among them of what we heard. Now Nafisa radiallahu anha, went to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, testing the water. She says, Ya Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, how come you're not married yet? He says, I don't have what it takes. So he says, how about Khadija? Is mali wa mal Khadija? Where am I and where is Khadija? He says, La alayk. If Khadija agrees to marry you, will you marry her? He said, of course. So she goes back to Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha and gives her the glad tiding. But of course she didn't say, now I have to play uh, hard to get and all that. Wallahi, akhi, we don't play these games, my brothers and sisters. We have to please Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah. We have to make sure that we follow the Quran and Sunnah in getting our weddings and to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the dawri, don't make things that are lawful, difficult, akhi. So the things that are unlawful will become easy. The scholar says, Wallahi, if we make it easy for our youth to get married, like Khadija radiallahu anha arda, Prophet Muhammad sallam, Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu anha arda, as you see in the seerah, when she married Ali radiallahu anha, what was her dowry, akhi? How could we make it difficult for our brothers and sisters to get married? Especially in this society, we have to protect their chastity. We have to make sure that they get married young and make it easy for them and help them to do the right thing, not make it difficult for them. Of course, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now Khadija radiallahu anha arda, accepted marrying Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he married her for 25 years. He was 25 years and Khadija was 40 years. There was a different in age, but she was the most beloved as you will see, how she stood by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For 25 years he married none other than Khadija, till he was 50 years old. Again, وَرُزُقَ مِنْهَا الْأَوْلَادِ Prophet Muhammad sallam was given that children by Khadija radiallahu anha wardaha. Seven, there are three uh, sons and four daughters. Except Ibrahim alayhi salam was from Maria al qitiya But the rest of his children was uh, Al-Qasim. Well, Abdullah, and he used to be called Al-Tahir wa tayyib But people think that there is more people, more children. No, is it Abdullah was nicknamed or dubbed Al-Tayyib, Al-Tahir, that's fine, inshallah, but it's, it is the name of Abdullah. So it's Qasim, Abdullah, Ibrahim, and so on, inshallah, alayhi salam, and this is where we'll get to them in time, inshallah. And of course, wa Ruqayya, wa Zainab, wa Mukulthum, wa Fatima, among the four that makes him the seven, the children of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, it is time to rebuild the Kaaba. Because of what happened, it is one narration that is uh, water drowned or was uh, torn down by a fire. One a woman was uh, trying to give uh, Bukhur, you know, the incense, and uh, she it, it, it kind of uh, burned down. Whatever the story is, Allahu A'lam. But they wanted to rebuild the Kaaba. But even then, they were mushriks. They had worshipped the idols. They as ascribed partners unto Allah. But even them, Akhi, and Ukhti did not want to have any unlawful wealth in rebuilding the Kaaba. So they said, no, la mal baghi, la mahr baghi. There was no one, uh, the ladies of the night, or any unlawful sources of money will be included in rebuilding the Kaaba. 
And they said, no oppressive money, nothing, no ghulu. And we don't use any riba, even then, the usury. I know we can call it whatever we want to call it. I know that some of the scholars said this is among the signs of times, that things will be called other than its name. Subhanallah. So what we call now, uh, you know, this uh, type of fornication that you see on your screen. Allah help us, wallahi. People kissing each other and doing other things, as you know. Allahum musta'an. And they call that, not fornication, they call it that art. Subhanallah. And they call the what? The, uh, this alcohol now, they call it uh, spiritual uh, drinks. Allahum musta'an. Really? Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. And they call the usury, uh, no, 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 it's interest. This is something of good. So I have an idea. Why don't we call the pig a cow and start eating it? If that's, if that's all it takes, akhi, change the name of something and it becomes halal. Allahum musta'an, ya akhi. Let's call things a spade a spade, inshallah. So even then, even then, they did not want to have any unlawful source of money in rebuilding the Kaaba, but money was short. So they rebuilt the Kaaba. And they took out Hijr Ismail. Hijr Ismail was not included in the Kaaba. And that's why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was talking to Aisha, he said, Wallahi, law la anna qawmika hadithu ahdin bi kufr, la hadamta al-Kaaba, la banaytaha ala maqam Ibrahim. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, because of the people that are new to Islam, because we don't want to rebuild and see it, because they're making a mockery of the Kaaba, the, the Hiba, this beautiful glory that comes with it. He says that people will, will be doubtful. And speculate about this Kaaba. He said he would have rebuilt the Kaaba, the Kaaba, and he would take the Hijr Ismail, as you see it, supposed to be inside. That's why you don't actually make tawaf inside. You go from the outside, not from the inside the Kaaba, outside the Kaaba. And he says it had two doors. People came in from one door and came out from the other door. But then, my brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad wanted to rebuild it, but understand the hikmah. The wisdom behind it. Because now, تَأْخِيرُ bayan لِحَاجَةً We can delay the bayan, what is known to be right, for a reason, for a purpose. دَرْءُ mafsada. This is a lesser, if there's something harm and good can combine, and the more harm than good, we leave it, inshaAllah. But we understand, that we, dec we clear the, the truth in a time, inshaAllah. But we learn, even then, they have to clear the money. So ask yourself, أَخِي and أُخْتِي, how is your wealth, my brothers and sisters? Do you say, Hal min mazid? Do you say, give me more, give me more, and you don't care about the lawful sources? Remember the Sahabiyat, radiallahu anhunna ajma'een. They used to tell their husband before they go out. He says, اتقي الله فينا. نحن نصبر على حر الجوع ولا نصبر على حر جهنم. Fear Allah in treating us. We can withstand the pain of hunger, but we cannot withstand the pain of the hellfire. So how is your wealth, akhi and ukhti? Remember that this wealth, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nisa, harf, this nisa, your wife is like harf. Cultivation, tough. Imagine this beautiful tree, which is your wife, Akhi. As a smart man, you keep the harms away from it. In a, beautify this beautiful tree. Quench the thirst of that tree, your wife, with lawful sources of money. Why? Because the fruit of that tree are your children. So how are you doing, Akhi and Ukhti? On that beautiful wealth that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even then he didn't. So we learn, inshallah, a few lessons that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about. And of course, a man in comes to the rebuild in the Kaaba, uh, a slave was given in Mecca, a Coptic, and he knew how to rebuild using, subhanallah, the wood and the ship. It was wrecked close by, so they used the wood. And the man came in with the knowledge, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the causes, gave him everything to rebuild the Kaaba again. But they were afraid. Why were they afraid? They were afraid because they remembered what happened to Abraha. What happened to Abraha, they have not forgotten. So they were afraid to take it down and rebuild it again. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His will and His infinite wisdom gave Him a way to do it. With that, we will talk about it in the next episode, inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those in speech and follow the best of it. Wa akhir da'wam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'een. Jazakumullah khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.